In this part of the lab, you are learning how to accurately measure using the metric system. And you'll be measuring liquid volume using liters as the standard unit. We'll be measuring weight or mass using grams. We'll be measuring length using meters and temperature in Celsius. So I first want to talk about measuring liquid volume. And it's important to realize the different types of glassware that are available in the lab and be able to choose the most appropriate type of glassware depending on what you're doing. So I'm going to start with these. These are called beakers. I have just three sizes out today. These come in a variety of sizes, different volumes. And beakers are a great vessel in which to conduct an experiment. They have a nice wide mouth, so it's easy to add materials to this beaker. It's easy to remove materials. It's easy to stir. But I would not want to use this to measure liquid volume. The reason for that is it has a big wide mouth and the graduations on the glassware are pretty far apart so it's just not as accurate as some other choices I could make to measure liquid volume. I have looked at this at eye level and this appears to be exactly 200 milliliters that I have in the beaker. But when I pour it into something more accurate, such as this graduated cylinder, I can see how inaccurate this really is. So this graduated cylinder has a narrower mouth, it has a smaller diameter, so it's already going to be more accurate. But it also has more graduations. So if I look at this at eye level and look at the meniscus, which I'll explain in a minute. So I'm going to go to eye level, and I'm actually at 198 milliliters. So I was off by, by two whole milliliters when I measured using my beaker. So you would never want to use a beaker to measure liquid volume. Graduated cylinders are far more accurate and become more accurate the smaller the diameter. So you can see this is a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. It's got a smaller mouth than this one does, smaller diameter. And this one is even smaller. This one is a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. So let's talk about what the meniscus is. When the liquid in this case water, touches the glass, the surface tension between that glass and the water causes a curve in the surface of the water. And in the case of water, it's what we call a concave meniscus. We measure liquid volume, when we're talking about water, we measure the liquid volume from the bottom of the meniscus, meaning the bottom of that curve. So it will appear that the water goes to a certain point, but you won't measure it there. You'll measure it at the bottom of that curve. So I'm going to add some liquid to this graduated cylinder. I'm going to do that using a pipette. So I'm going to really kind of be talking about meniscus and pipette at the same time. This is a 10 milliliter pipette. I know that because it says 10 milliliters right here. It also tells me that each of these graduations is one tenth of a milliliter. So each of these graduations on the pipette, each of these lines is a tenth of a milliliter. Something else I wanna point out, this is a 10 milliliter pipette, the zero is at the top. This is a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, and it's hard to see this right now because there's no liquid in here. The 10 is at the top, the zero is at the bottom. The numbering is reversed. The reason for this is this dispenses out the top and this dispenses out the bottom. So the numbering is reversed. I'm going to fill this by putting a pump onto this pipette. And this pump is used to pull water into the pipette when I turn this little wheel on the side. You wanna make sure it's on tightly, otherwise the pipette will leak. It will drip liquid out the bottom. And I'm going to spin this wheel with my thumb. It will be hard to see on the video, but I'm going to spin this. And as this white part goes up, the water is going to get pulled into the pipette. So here we go. Okay, again, zeros at the top, tens at the bottom. 
And as I turn this wheel, it's filling my pipette. This is not the best pipette pump, that is for sure. So if I fill this to the zero, and I look at eye level, I'm going to look at the bottom of that curve, and I'm going to have to fill a little bit above the zero to have it really be zero. Now, it's important to realize though, when I'm at the zero, I don't have zero milliliters of liquid in here. I actually have 10. And if I dispense one milliliter, I don't have one milliliter in here now. I've dispensed one, I did have 10, so now I have nine. So I can either count or I can realize that 10 minus one is nine milliliters. So this shows that I have dispensed one milliliter and that's really the purpose of those reversed graduations. This particular pipette actually has them the other direction too, but a lot of the pipettes you'll use in lab only go up to the zero on the top. Also, these bubbles are forming because this is actually a starch solution. I just pulled this out of the prep room because it had color and I'm kind of regretting that now because it has too many bubbles. <laughs> you would normally want those bubbles to be out before you read the volume. Okay, so that's the 10 milliliter pipette. This is a one milliliter pipette. So this is really accurate. So this says one slash 100. So each of these little lines is one one hundredth of a milliliter. This entire pipette up to the zero is one milliliter. If you compare with this one, on this one, the distance between these two numbers is one milliliter. That's the volume of this full pipette. So this one is very accurate. One one hundredth of a milliliter, that is a very accurate liquid measurement. Again, I could use this to add or remove liquid from a graduated cylinder to get to the exact volume I need in my graduated cylinder. One more type of pipette that's important to understand, this is a micro pipette. And the way this works is you, you turn the dial, and as you turn the dial, the volume changes. This is spring-loaded, tension-loaded, so whatever volume is indicated on the dial is what I will dispense when I fill this pipette. So this says one, three, seven. The one and the three are in black, the seven is in red. That's 13.7 microliters. One microliter is one one millionth of a liter. So we're talking very small volumes here. This actually doesn't hold liquid on its own. For it to hold liquid, I need a tip, and those typically come in a box like this. And you stick your micro pipetter onto the tip, and there it is. Now, to dispense liquid, I'm going to push this knob down just halfway. There are two clicks, first click, second click. I only need to go to the first click. So I go to the first click, stick this in my liquid, release, and it fills with that very tiny volume. In fact, it fills with exactly 13.7 microliters. Then to dispense this, all I do is push halfway again, and it will dispense that liquid. I wouldn't want to dispense with the tip down in because then when I let go, it's just going to suck that liquid back up again. So very, very accurate, the micro pipette. Now I wanna quickly show you a metric ruler. And it's important to understand that in this class, we do not use the inches on any ruler. We're only measuring in meters, centimeters, and millimeters. So ignore the inches at the top. You're going to go to the part down here that says metric. And you'll notice one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Those are centimeters. Each of the lines is a millimeter. There are 10 millimeters per centimeter. So if I went to four centimeters, that would be 40 millimeters. You will be measuring lots of things in millimeters. It's important to realize it's the little lines. 
So if you told your instructor that you measured 4.2 milliliters, that would be very unlikely. You couldn't measure tenths of a milliliter with the naked eye, <laughs> not using this ruler, okay? So if you're telling 4.2, I'm assuming that that was actually 42 millimeters. And I'm sorry if I said milliliters when I was just explaining that, it's millimeters. So meters are length, and we're measuring centimeters or millimeters with this ruler. For weight or mass, we use a scale or a balance in the lab. And this one is pretty simple to use. You always want to make sure you lift the lid. Oftentimes a student will say, the scale's not working right, and it's because the lid is closed. So you want to open the lid, make sure the power is on, and make sure when the power is on that it says grams, because that's what we're measuring in is grams. You also don't ever want to put anything directly on the scale. It will add residue that contributes to the weight of the next item that's weighed. You'll always want to use something like a weighing boat or some other type of container. So I'm going to put my weighing boat on, and it weighs 1.92 grams. But I don't have to record that and then subtract it from the weight of my object. Instead, I can just hit the zero key on this scale, it sometimes ha has the word tear, T-A-R-E, and that means the same thing. Now it has subtracted the weight of this item. It's starting at zero. Now I can put my object on my weighing boat and it tells me that the lid to the starch container is 2.30 grams. It just changed 2.31 grams. Okay, so scale, pretty simple to use. Thermometer in this class, Sometimes you'll be measuring in Fahrenheit and converting to Celsius, and sometimes you'll be directly measuring in Celsius. It just depends on what thermometer is put out that day, so sometimes you will have to do a temperature conversion. It's important to know how to use those equations. So 